Mother. Hello, dear. How was your day? It was fine. I went to see about drama club tryout. Oh, of course, I forgot. Who drove you home? Paul Hanley. Sort of ran into him. We had a long talk about life and art, that kind of thing. I don't agree with everything he says, but he certainly makes you think. Yes, he's, uh, he's a most unusual young man. Hmm. He is that, all right. I suppose because so much has happened to him. I keep wondering about him testifying against Elliot Carson. He was just a little boy then. He's been discussing that with you? No, of course not. I, I read the files down at the Clarion. Oh, I didn't realize you had. I like Mr. Carson. It's difficult to picture him killing his wife. Well, there's no point in speculating about it now. I wonder if Paul Hanley went to Europe because he was haunted by his past. I doubt if we'll ever find out. But you mustn't romanticize it, Allison. You know, I'd hoped when you started college classes, you'd make some new friends. You know, young people more your own age. Mother, Paul Hanley is my teacher. I'm in his English class. I know. But I can't help remembering when you were little and trailed after Uncle Matt instead of playing with the other youngsters. Well. They liked hide-and-seek and dolls while I was interested in reading. Can I help you get dinner or anything? I've made a chicken casserole. But you'll have to eat alone. Oh, is Dr. Rossi taking you to dinner? Okay. Well, have fun. Mother, what you said about me and Uncle Matt, I'm not trailing after Paul Hanley. It's not the same thing at all. And you don't really think Uncle Matt and Paul Hanley are the least bit alike. Any messages? No, Dr. Rossi, but Mr. Carson there has been waiting. Oh? Oh, good, thank you. Morning, Carson. Good morning, Doctor. Been in to see you, Father? Not yet, uh... You said you had some definite word today, so I wanted to wait. Well, the reports are all in. I've been studying them. Does that mean trouble? Well, no, not really. Your father needs an operation, the gallbladder. Will it affect his heart? Well, the strain will be relieved if we take care of the bladder. I'd like to schedule it for Monday. Well, I've never been an alarmist before, but... Well, this isn't the time to start. Believe me, I can appreciate what your father means to you, but you have to remember what you mean to your father. Well, if you seemed alarmed, it's going to frighten him. What can I do? Well, assure him that he needs the operation. As a matter of fact, you break the news to him. Make it seem like the most natural thing in the world. I don't think I can do that. I'm sure you can. You're good with people. I'll never forget the way you handled George Anderson. Here, yeah, show him that other people care for him. From Constance McKenzie. Thank you, Doctor. Dying and you ask how I feel. I'm dying of boredom, pills, needles, and x-rays. <laughs> Remember the first time I was photographed? Not many cameras then, but they took a picture of what your outsides look like. <laughs> <laughs> You're okay. <laughs> Doctor, say anything? Yeah, you're going to have to have an operation, Dad. Oh? Yeah, make you well, and also to get you out of here. I can't go on doing all the work down the shop if you're just going to lope around in here. Yeah. Yeah, how is the shop? You're making Portuguese Joe sign for that netting he's using. Absolutely. When? The operation. Oh, Dr. Rossi said Monday. Hospitals, hospitals. Here. That's you, what Constance McKenzie sent over to you. She did? Yeah. Come on, open it. Well. It's to keep, you know. You don't have to worry about fingerprints or anything. Well, not many folk take time for a kindness like that anymore. I'll tell you, you said that. Ah, sailing. 
Hey, remember sometimes you and I would sail clear down to Marblehead? Yeah. Well, we will again. Do you see much of her, Constance? Oh, sure, in the shop, you know, on the streets. Can't help but run into it. Why, why do you ask? A woman like that, a good woman, could let a man forget. You must have thought about getting married again. I come here to visit my father, and uh, the next thing I know, I've discovered a matchmaker. It doesn't have to be her, any woman, any good woman, to help you build a life. Well, that's asking a lot. I don't know any good woman that would accept me. Not yet. There would be children, Elliot. Children. And grandchildren. Huh? A son is an investment for a father. I'd expect to turn a profit. <laughs> but more than that, I want there to be someone for you when, when I'm not around. <laughs> uh, Dan, I told you this operation is perfectly simple. You both have to have confidence in Dr. Rossi. At my age, the only confidence I have is in God. And right now, in you. come into town on weekends? On weekends? Hmm. If you're someone, you have a family. And Phil is quite the family man. Didn't I tell you he was married? Everyone is. Are you still in love with him? Well, it's not the first love thing you had with Rod. Phil's hardly the type. But when he gets on that train and goes, I feel sort of empty inside. Oh, love should be fun. If he says what they say. Was it fun? Well, how do I look? Too good for that hotel house. Mm -hmm. Take my fur coat or you'll freeze to death. No, I couldn't. Besides, I'll know it isn't mine. Fine. Just a minute. Hello? Hello? Wait a minute, I can't hear you. Phil? No, of course I wasn't expecting you. Ah? Uh, well, that's wonderful. We'll have drinks here first. Wait a minute, Phil. I forgot to tell you, I have a new roommate. You're going to like her. No, no, no. She's prettier than Libby. Much prettier. She's... She's fresh-looking, you know what I mean? I don't know. I'll have to ask her. Hang on a minute, sweetie. Guess what? Phil has to come into town tomorrow. There's a convention next week, and he's meeting some VIP who's flying in from Europe. Now, there's a friend of Phil's coming in with him, and he asked Phil to fix him up with a date. I said I'd ask you. Well, I don't know. I've never met Phil. Well, what have you got to lose? We'll have a great dinner and lots of laughs. Shall I say yes? Mm. Okay. Phil? Phil Roy, he has a date. You'll still admire my taste in roommates, yes. Yes, I'm doing my exercises. <laughs> okay, sweetie, bye-bye. Get the job. <laughs> Sharon, I can. I'll see you on Monday. What's the difference? We'll spend an afternoon in the beauty parlor right here. But what am I going to wear? Here, try this. Libby left a load of things behind. She wore this at a fashion show. They let her keep it. Here, are you good at doing nails? I, I'll fix your hair and give you a facial that works. Mm. Does make me look different, doesn't it? Mm. Kind of older, don't you think? You are now a New York type Cinderella. The kind of that New York type Prince Charmings go for. Hmm. New York Cinderella. Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. Elliot, I understand how you feel. Do you? Allison's never had to want for anything that she needed. Except the father. I'm always tripping over your past all of a sudden. Just like an obstacle course. There are other people in the world, and I can't pretend they don't exist. What do you expect of me? Drink it down, Betty. It's going to be a long, cold drive.